We've all had moments we're not proud of. Be it because we were already exhausted and there heavy stress, we've all said things we've regretted, lashed out only to wish we could take it back, or entertained some kind of revenge fantasy or another, from mildly inconveniencing someone to worse. What is that short circuit taking us to those moments and actions we inevitably regret, and how can we prevent them? These are the questions we will be answering today by exploring the idea of cognitive cognitive diffusion in depth. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So when we lose our cool and act rashly or say something we don't mean, we could, in a way, say we were not being ourselves. We acted in a way we don't identify with. That's the whole problem. It's almost as if we lost sight of reality and acted according to something else. There is a very nice way to visualize this. So first, let's just pick an example. So let's say you hear some rando in insulting someone whom you very much care about, maybe a parent or a sibling or a partner or a child or a dear friend, doesn't matter too much, it's just, you know, follow the example, you hear yourself saying, how dare they, and you feel anger and indignation and you won't stand for this, this is either going to become a verbal fight or worse. Okay, so we've established our setting. If we were looking, you know, at a broader scale, there may be many interesting things to look at, like how preventing harm towards the people you cherish isn't really under your control. But for this video, we will only focus on confusion and diffusion, and we will start with a simple question. What is happening in this example? Basically, cognitive fusion is happening. I once heard this very good demonstration of what it is. Now, I want you to imagine that my hands are these thoughts and emotions I just described. How dare they? I'm so angry. I'm seeing red. And cognitive fusion is basically them coming close closer and closer like this until they completely restrict what I see and how connected I am to what is actually happening around them. So long as I am in that rage stage, I am doing this to myself. I'm only viewing some things, I'm completely missing out on many others and not accurately responding or reacting to everything else that is happening around me. So this is what fusion is. I'm so entangled with my thoughts that I have lost sight of both my actual as well as the actual reality around me. Now, cognitive diffusion is basically lowering my hands so I can see clearly again. I can find myself again and I can actually see the actual reality around myself. Well, now my hands haven't disappeared just like my thoughts and my emotions haven't either, but they are no longer blinding me or constricting me. I can choose what I want to do with my hands now, just like I can choose the degree with which I want to pay attention to and act on the thoughts and feelings currently going through me. All right, now let's go back to the example and tie the fury and crack together. When we're fused with that anger, we're also believing it as an absolute truth. A slander has been committed and some kind of retribution is in order. These thoughts are directly dictating our behavior. However, if I just start shouting and harassing the random person, I am not leaving with agreement with my ideal self, the person I wish to be. While we're in this state, we cannot separate our point of view from reality. Now, there are several tactics uh, I can use to gain some distance from this powerful angry thought cocktail in order to view my thoughts just passing by, allowing me to examine them and decide on what I actually want to do, nevertheless coexisting with them. So my hands have not been chopped off, they're still here. Now, there are many different tactics we can use to do this diffusion and basically I'm going to present four to you, uh, which I have called acknowledgement, ridicule, replacement, and mindfulness. Acknowledgement is the easiest to understand. Basically, you narrate to yourself what is going on inside of your mind, the thoughts passing by. So, for example, you might say something like, I hear an angry thought passing by again. Ridicule is a very slight tweak in acknowledgement. Basically, you ridicule the thought to remove away its credibility, thereby also gaining some distance. You can either do this by imagining someone you have in very low regard, you know, can even be a fictional character uh, if you'd like to, instead of someone from the real world. Um, but basically, you imagine them saying something like, and I'm like, how? dare they say that? It's like such a huge insult. I can't even. That isn't anybody. Uh, I just wanted to use a different voice <laughs> for the example. Another idea would be being a bit sarcastic with regard
regards to the fox, so... Gee, thanks! That insult had really passed me by! Moving on to more advanced territory, we have replacement, and here we are basically seeking an alternative explanation for the events that are unfolding in front of us. So this necessarily disrupts our thought stream and creates some distance as well. So now this can be something like saying, oh, this person is clearly upset about something else and it's they're just looking for a fight, doesn't actually have anything to do with me and my loved people around me. Another example would be asking if you might have misheard or misunderstood their intention, though these don't apply all too well in this example. Finally, we have mindfulness. Basically, you'll be doing the same thing you usually do in meditation. You are deliberately removing your fused attention and either being open and curious about the thoughts that are passing by you and you're just noticing in other passage um, to deliberately focusing on something, uh, like focusing on your diaphragm as you breathe. As you can see, there are all kinds of different ways ways of going about changing how you are relating to your thoughts and beliefs and emotions and expectations because that's what all these four different tactics come down to, right? Just different ways of framing your relationship between yourself and these thoughts, beliefs, expectations, emotions you are hearing going through you. Finally, like most things, this is not a skill you are born with. But fortunately, it is a skill that gets better the more you practice it. The more you do it, the easier easier and more natural it will become, and the more you will be able to objectively assess a situation without losing your calm and act in a way that is fully aligned with the person you want to be. Too long, didn't watch. In this video, we looked at the process of cognitive diffusion in detail, so basically how you can go from a difficult situation to a more objective place from which you can observe your thoughts, beliefs and emotions and decide how true they are and how much you want to act on them. Specifically, we looked at four different strategies to do so, acknowledgement, ridicule, replacement, and mindfulness. There is still so much more to explore, so if this sounds interesting and valuable, consider subscribing. If you found this video interesting and you'd like to see how cognitive diffusion is useful on a broader scale, I'd recommend either this video, which presents an overview of how we go from situation to thought narrative to diffusion to deliberate action, or this other one you might want to check out, which will give you a a concrete idea of all of the components of the even broader BAB framework. With that, until next time.